With all the flooding across the state, there's a lot of issues that people need to be concerned with. And Sergio, one of those issues is with septic systems. Yeah, septic systems. Actually, 40% of houses in the state have septic systems. So that's a quite substantial percentage or fraction of houses in the state. And um, of septic systems in the state, 90% of that are two systems. One is the conventional systems. That's the gravel septic tank. You have a gravel and pipe, you know, dispersal area. And the other one is the aerobic treatment system. So those are the two main ones. And these two types of systems are adversely affected by severe weather events that bring floods and, of course, power interruptions. So let's just talk about the conventional septic system and what are some of the issues that flooding you know, causes with those. Okay, so a conventional system has a septic tank and a lateral line. So if you have a septic tanks, there's going to be lids exposed at the surface. And if the lids are not watertight, there's always going to be that possibility that water is going to seep in into your tank. And now, if your tank has flood water, well, water from your house is not going to go anywhere, right? So it's going to back up to the house, back up, back to the house. And if there's too much water in your septic tank, there's even that, even that possibility that the water in the tank itself is going to backflow to your house. So that itself is, is a very, very, very bad situation because, you know, you have contaminants and pollutants and ha hazardous uh, substances in, in, in your um, sewer. Well that, well, that sounds really worrisome, but there are some measures that people can take to, you know, if their backyard is um, flooded to, you know, there are measures that they can take to prevent some of those issues, right? Yeah, to, to prevent those, those issues, um, first of all, you, you, whenever your back, backyard is now flooded, where your septic tank is, the first thing you gotta do is minimize water use. You never know how long the flood is gonna last. So minimize water use. Uh, uh, the, the second is that if you have a if if you have a uh, a basement, uh, better plug the, those drains in your basement just just to be just to be sure. So let's move to the aerobic systems and with those, what what are some of the issues that flooding causes with those types of systems? All right, the aerobic treatment system again. This is a very very popular um, system in the state. It runs with electricity. It has a, a pump that basically controls the dispersal of water to your backyard, and there's also an aerator that supplies air and you know supplies atmospheric air to your tank to enhance treatment all those runs in electricity so if that control box that has those electrical components is in the risk of being flooded you better turn off your pump uh, for your, your system uh, because you know water electricity doesn't really agree with each other yeah. whenever there's a flood whenever there's there's this flooding that affects your electrical components your septic tanks it's it's prudent to call somebody a professional uh, it's not good to open the tanks yourself because there could be harmful fumes uh, and, and, of course, harmful microorganisms, uh, pathogenic microorganisms. And uh, for those electrical components, if they are flooded, a rusting and short circuiting, that's not a good deal for you to do by yourself. Call a, uh, a professional to do it for you. All right. Thanks, Sergio. Yeah. If you would like some more information on conventional and aerobic systems, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.